use program that lets you design your own presentations. You can use it to create slideshows, presentations for work, multimedia projects, and just about anything else you can imagine. When you open PowerPoint, there's a good chance you'll be taken to the start screen first. From here, you can access recent presentations or create something new, either from scratch or from one of the built-in themes. In this example, we'll click Blank Presentation. Next, you might want to take a minute to explore the interface and make sure you know your way around. Why don't we begin with the ribbon, which is the collection of tools and features at the top of the screen. The ribbon is divided into tabs like Design, Insert, and Home, so you can easily find what you're looking for. There are also commands on each tab that have been organized into groups. For example, if you look closely at the font group, you'll find it has everything you need to work with text, including options like bold, italics, font color, and size. Some groups even have an arrow in the bottom right corner that you can click to view even more commands. If you ever feel like the ribbon is taking up too much space, you can always hide or minimize it. All you have to do is click the arrow in the upper right corner, then choose the option you want. Also in the upper right corner is a place where you can access your Microsoft account. Here you can update your photo, manage your account settings, or switch to a different account altogether. For help working with PowerPoint, take a look at the Tell Me feature. It works just like a regular search bar, allowing you to quickly find the right tool or command. All you have to do is enter what you want, and you'll be given a list of options. You can use the command directly from the menu without having to find it on the ribbon. You can even customize your copy of PowerPoint to make certain commands more convenient. Take the Quick Access toolbar in the upper left corner. This area gives you access to frequently used commands like Save and Undo, no matter where you are in the ribbon. To add more commands, just click the tiny arrow next to the toolbar, then choose the ones you want. I'm going to add New and also Quick Print because I use both of these commands pretty frequently. Now let's take a look at the presentation itself. In this example, I've opened a business profile that I'm working on. You can navigate between different slides using the pane on the left, while the space in the center is where you'll actually create and edit your presentation. At the top and to the left of the center pane, you should see two small rulers. These make it easier to adjust your presentation and align the objects on your slide. To show or hide the rulers, go to the View tab, then check or uncheck the box depending on your preferences. You can also turn on grid lines and guides for even more control over your slide layout. In the bottom right corner, you'll find a few more tools that let you change the way your presentation is displayed. Here's what the tools look like up close. To zoom in or out, click and drag the zoom control. The number next to the slider will tell you what the zoom percentage is. You can also switch between different slide views using these four buttons. Normal is selected by default. This mode is great for everyday tasks like creating and editing slides. Slide Sorter displays smaller versions of the slides in your presentation. Reading View hides all the editing tools to make your slides easier to review. And finally, Play Slideshow will play your slides as an actual presentation. Last but not least, I'd like to give you a quick tour of the backstage view. You can get there by clicking the File tab. Just look for it on the far left of the ribbon. Here you can access all kinds of information related to your current presentation and more. This includes commands like New, Open, Save, and Print. All you have to do is click an item in the left pane, and it'll open on the right. This makes it easy to find what you're looking for and review your options all in one place. That covers the basics of PowerPoint. Now that you're comfortable with the interface, including the backstage view, the ribbon, and the work area, you're ready to start your first presentation. As you get further into developing your presentation, it can be helpful to learn how to review and manage your slides. You might be surprised by some of the tools that PowerPoint has to offer. 
including ways to practice your presentation and take notes. This default view should be familiar to you. There's a place on the left to navigate your slides, and a place here to edit your presentation. This actually has a name, and it's called Normal View. It's one of four views that you can access using the buttons at the bottom of the PowerPoint window. The second view is Slide Sorter, where you'll find thumbnail versions of each slide in your presentation. Here, you can easily change the order of your slides just by dragging and dropping the thumbnails. Up next is Reading View. This fills most of your screen with a preview of your presentation, leaving room for navigation buttons here at the bottom. Finally, we have Slideshow View, which completely fills the screen with what the audience will see when you present. There's a helpful menu in the bottom left corner that will appear only when you move the mouse, giving you the ability to navigate your slides and access other features like the pen and highlighter tools. Thinking ahead a bit, I'd like to start writing some notes about what I plan to say during my presentation. PowerPoint actually offers two different ways to do this. The first is in the notes pane, located at the bottom of the screen. You might need to click the command here to make it appear. First, I'm going to click and drag the edge of the pane to make it a little bigger. Now we can click inside and start typing our notes for this slide. This is a great place to add ideas, talking points, or just little reminders for yourself. There's even a way to print these notes so you can refer to them later when you're presenting. The other way to view and enter notes can be found on the View tab. Just click the Notes Page command, and you can focus on the notes for each slide one at a time. To navigate, use the arrow keys on your keyboard or the scroll bar on the right. You can also type your notes directly into the text box. And go ahead and zoom in if you need to here. In addition to the Notes tool, PowerPoint gives you a couple more ways to prepare and manage your slides. For example, if you've ever written an outline for something at work or school, you'll probably like this next feature. All you have to do is click the command that says Outline View, and the left pane will display an outline version of all the text in your slides. This makes it easy to review the contents of your presentation, and you can also fine-tune the text from here if you need to. To exit this view, click the Normal command at the bottom of the window, or here on the View tab. The other thing I'd like to do at this point is organize my slides into sections, which can make them easier to navigate. In this example, we have sort of a two-part presentation. First there are dogs, and then there are cats and other pets. So I think I'd like to create a section for each. Select the slide where you want your first section to begin, then go to the Home tab, click the Section command, and choose Add Section from the menu. To name this section while it's still selected, click the command again, then go ahead and choose Rename. We're going to label this one Dogs to make it easy to tell the sections apart. Next, I'm going to repeat the process to create another section later in the presentation. It's going to start with this slide here. and it's going to be called Cats and Small Pets. Now we can collapse and expand the sections using the tiny arrows next to each section name. As you can see, sections are a great way to break up your presentation so you can display only the slides you're currently working with. Now you know several different ways to prepare and manage your slides. How you use these features is up to you, but they're bound to come in handy as you continue working in PowerPoint. Many features in Office, including PowerPoint, are geared towards saving and sharing your files online.
This is done through OneDrive, an online storage space for your documents and files that lets you access them even when you're away from your computer. If you want to use OneDrive, make sure you're logged into PowerPoint with your Microsoft account. First, let's take a look at the regular save command on the Quick Access toolbar. Just click, and if it's a new presentation, you'll be taken to the Backstage view, where you can choose where to save your file. For now, let's save it to our computer. Click the Browse button to choose a location for your presentation, then enter a file name, and click Save when you're done. Now you can save at any time by clicking the icon. If you want to save a different version, maybe in a different location or with a different file name, you can go to Save As in the Backstage view and follow the same steps. Again, you'll have the option of saving to OneDrive or to this PC. But if you primarily save files to your computer, you may want to change the default setting so this PC is always selected. To do that, click Options in the Backstage view, then select Save in the left pane. Now check the box that reads Save to Computer by default. When you're done, click OK. If you ever forget to save, or if your computer crashes while you're working, don't worry. The Auto Recovery feature saves a backup copy of your presentation automatically. To recover an unsaved file, all you have to do is reopen PowerPoint, and the Document Recovery pane should appear on the left. Here you can access any recovered versions of the file. By default, PowerPoint auto saves a backup copy every 10 minutes, so if you're working on something for less than 10 minutes, you may not be able to use this feature. You can also export your presentations into an alternate file type by clicking Export in the Backstage view. Exporting as a PDF is a good choice if you need to send a presentation to someone who doesn't have PowerPoint. This format lets them view but not edit the presentation using a free program that anyone can download. Under Change File Type, you can access several other formats depending on what you need. For example, if the person you're sharing with uses PowerPoint 2003 or earlier, you'll need to send them a 97 to 2003 presentation instead. To share your presentation with others, click the Share button in the top right corner. Next, you'll have to upload your presentation to OneDrive, so click on the option associated with your account. Once it's uploaded, you can email an invitation for others to view or edit the file. There are more ways to share at the bottom of the window, like attaching your presentation to an email or getting a shareable link. If you have Office 365, you can use the autosave feature once you upload your presentation to OneDrive. Whenever you make a change, it will automatically save your file. However, if you want to disable this feature, click the button in the top left corner. Keep in mind that if you deactivate auto-saving, you'll need to click the Save button every time you want to save. With so many options, how you save and share your work is up to you, whether it's exporting your file as a PDF or sharing your presentation online.